Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, not only am I recording from a different area, but this is a killer show. This is the ways to kill growth. So if you have any type of business, big or small, or even getting into it, this is a good episode. Make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy this episode, which is a hodgepodge last minute episode because the one that we just went and recorded uh, didn't actually record properly. So now it's down to the wire. So I'm in a new location. I'm actually sitting in my office, but I'm glad you're here either way. If it's your first time, have a look around. Every episode looks completely different than this, but uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you learn something from it. And more importantly, hopefully you love it and go back and watch or listen to some other episodes. Now, if you're a cool kid, if you watch and listen to every episode, then what's up? It is because of you that I get such a luxurious, luxurious uh, empty office. Anyway... Uh, I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. That is what I do. So if you have any orders you'd like to put in, I would love to be your rep. Put them in your cart. Shoot me a text and say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And I would love nothing more than to be your rep. Put your orders in. Uh, My number directs 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So text me, call me, whatever. And I would love, love to put your orders in. And... The last shameless plug of the day is if you have not gotten your American Window Cleaner Magazine subscription, what are you doing? Go to awcmag.com and get that subscription. It is a real magazine, paper magazine, sent to your door every single month with awesome pictures, reviews, products, and of course, the world famous, world famous. Window cleaning sticker sheet, all custom stickers every single month. So you got to get it. If you don't have the subscription, go to awcmag.com forward slash sub and get that magazine. Do it. Anyway. All right. So as you heard in the intro, I screwed up and I configured a great show that I just recorded with uh, two people who will be next week's show because I have to re-record it now as soon as I bribe them into doing that. So I'm doing kind of a last minute one here at the office. So This week, we are talking about what would have been next week, but this week, it's ways to kill growth. Ways to kill your growth. Now, even if you're not growing size-wise, you're going to be growing with health of your company, right? Fair to say, you're helping your company grow stronger. You're helping your company grow better, and maybe you're helping your company grow bigger. There's a lot of ways that growth can happen, but there's a lot of ways that growth can be stipend or even just ended altogether. I know companies who have gone under business, out of business, gone under, (laughs) combination of both, and it's because they killed their business unintentionally. They just did. So here's a few ways that I'm gonna tell you can kill your business. And uh, secret here is that if you do the opposite of these things, uh, you can really, really, really really help your business. Now, I talk to a ton of people. You know, I talk to people all day long. Every day, that's what I do. And uh, I've heard some amazing stories. And this is what helped my business. But this is what some of the people out there are doing. And it is blowing the doors. I've talked to so many of you who your companies are just doing absolutely amazing. So first off, high five for that. High five. But the first thing on the list of things that you don't want to do because it's going to kill your business but it's not rescheduling not rescheduling okay i kind of gave up talking about the dentist clothes for a while because i kicked it in the ground too many times beat it like a dead horse but if you've done the dentist clothes i know for a fact that you have more work now than you ever have and more people on the books the dentist clothes is simple when you leave the dentist you have another appointment. You automatically have another appointment, right? So why are we in our industry so scared about getting somebody to book their next appointment? You go to the dentist, you leave there with your next appointment, nobody has ever questioned it ever. Every single person that I've talked to, except for the exception of maybe one person, which 
They made it's new, so they may just need to work on it. Has had absolutely phenomenal results. The dentist close is closing you. 80 to 90 percent of the people that you do is going to get them to reschedule right then and there. And this is how I word it. Please word it the same or close to play with it. Obviously, I don't know anything. I'm just some dude who sits in an empty office with a microphone. But it is when you're all said and done, everything is done. Thank you, Mrs. Jones, for everything. Um, so now, did you want to schedule your next appointment uh, three months from now, or did you want to wait till six months? Now, first off, let's break this down. I did not ask a yes or no question, right? I didn't ask a yes or no question. So I'm not prompting prompting a yes or no answer. I'm not prompting a no, right? So what I'm prompting is three months or six months. You'll be surprised how many people still choose three months but most people are like, no, I'll just wait six months. Six months sounds good. I always, the day of, I'm printing my schedule six months later, the week of that. Oh, great. So it looks like I have availability on the 17th of uh, March. Does that work for you? It's going to be about the same time. We're going to call you the Monday of that week and just let you know. Yeah, absolutely looks good. Great. We'll send you a reminder. We'll get you in the books and I uh, definitely appreciate it. We will see you in six months. You walk away and guess what? I have to do nothing to get them to come back. They already trust me. They're already spending their money with me. Now they're coming back because I put them in the book. This is how the biggest companies do it. This is how the strongest companies do it. Because yes, some people may be like, well, I don't know right now what, what, right? I get that. But when you have this, you're filling up six months from now. So say every customer you have in a year, every single one of them, or heck, even 75% of them, does that same job twice a year at least. What would that do for your company? That could potentially double your company just by doing that. But I have some people who say, you know what, I don't even call them. You know, I don't want to bug them. Right. I am going to wait for them to call me. You know, I uh, love the service and I don't want to be an annoyance. Who have you ever done service for that wasn't extremely happy for what you did? right? Who did you do service for that didn't get done and go, oh my gosh, everything looks so good. Everybody's like that. And the reason is because we bring happiness, but our service is a luxury. People love to have what we do. So all I'm doing is I'm allowing them to be happy again. If you have that and you're caught up in your head and you don't want to call somebody, you don't want to do somebody, those are the companies out there. And maybe you haven't done it yet, so I'm not talking about you. If you want to write me angry emails, do it. It's jersey at windowcleaner.com. But if you haven't done it yet, and you're not getting new people, you're not scheduling, you're not calling, you're not getting those people to reschedule, well, then every customer you're working so hard for, why would you kill your momentum? It's like having the fastest race car and slitting all the tires. It does not make sense. Remember, you're not bugging people. You're providing them with the service that they called you for in the first place. They would be absolutely ecstatic to do your service or have your service done again, right? So I want to provide it for people. If you haven't done the dentist close, listen, I know a lot of you uh, talk to me. A lot of you let me put your orders in, which is phenomenal. A lot of you have a subscription to American Window Cleaner, which is even double phenomenal which hopefully you're going to get a subscription right now and then let me put your order in after. But a lot of you keep me up to date in your business, which I love. You know, it's so great that I get to basically be on journeys with other people, right? So I'm going to ask you this. If you've done the dentist close, how did it work out for you? How did it work out for you? And what are you getting back from it? I'd love to know that. I love to keep up with that. So please do let me know uh, how it's worked for you. Uh, my number again, 862-312-2026. I've heard literally one bad experience, or not even bad experience, but they're like, oh, I had one person say yes, but like most people say no. I think they're doing it wrong, and if it's you, I'm sorry, but I think you could work on that. You could get those numbers up. But you do it, let me know how it works for you. Another thing that you can do to kill your growth is to not have add-on services. If there's any of you out there who just do residential window cleaning, stop. Don't do just window cleaning. If you do just 
residential window cleaning and you don't do screen cleaning tracks, if you don't offer maybe gutter cleaning, if you're up on the ladders already, if you don't do house washing, soft washing, man, those services, it's in that that kind of, that that realm of exterior home services, it's huge. It's huge. You're leaving so much money on the table. I know big companies that aren't doing pressure washing. I know big pressure washing companies that aren't doing window cleaning. And let me explain what happens. On top of the fact that if I do window cleaning, I can upsell people on pressure washing. If I do pressure washing, I can upsell people on window cleaning. But think about this. For the most part, you are not doing a house wash without also getting the windows cleaned. You are not going to get your windows cleaned if you're also going to get a house wash. So if you call, somebody calls you and says, oh, I like my windows cleaned in a house wash. Oh, sorry, we don't do a house wash, but I'd love to do your windows. Well, that person goes, okay, great. Well, let me call around, see if I can get that scheduled, and I'll let you know. They don't call you back. Why is the reason for that? The reason they don't call you back is because the other company did both services. And you lost that account. Right? Or now you're trying to schedule, you know, with another company, which is absolutely amazing. You can't get my uh, my uh, excitement there, right? But what you want to do is you want to be able to offer them the services that they need, right? So if somebody's got their hand out, there's a certain amount of money for exterior cleaning, you want to be able to do the exterior clean. Now, I don't think that you should also do, say, lawn care. I don't think that you should also do painting. You know, some people do. Some people put it together really well. But there's certain things that you do that are a little bit beyond your scope of work. Now, an exterior cleaning service, for me, I'm all the way from your tip of your roof to the flats of your concrete, I do that. Exterior window cleaning, exterior house wash, soft wash, hardscape, concrete, garage, reclamation, roofs. I do all that stuff and it's still an easy sell because if I'm doing windows for somebody, they may also need the house washed. Or if I'm doing windows for somebody, they may also need the concrete done. Now I can upsell the two of them. The other side of it is, is I now have multiple ways that I can advertise to people. I can now put an ad out there for pressure washing and I can get people who may also want window cleaning. Or I can catch people who want window cleaning who didn't know they wanted pressure washing. If you can do that, it's having both services offering those add-ons. Now, don't be a jack of all trades, a master of none. That's just, that's not good. It's not good for anybody for you to not be good at what you do. Right? So if you do too many things, it's going to ruin your reputation for being really, really good at the one thing you are really, really good at. Now, a lot of you know, if you watch me, that I did also uh, do some fleet cleaning for a while. Uh, fleet cleaning was really, really good. Uh, I had, it was monster contracts. It was great. But no one, I, I don't show up to somebody's house and say, hey, I'm here to clean your windows. And by the way, do you have any semis you'd like me to wash? None, none, it never happened, right? So it's too far out of my realm. It's too far out of my wheelhouse or my, my core of products, which is exterior services, right? So if you are too far out and doing too many things, you're stretched too thin, if you pick up dog poop, you paint, do lawns, you wash windows, you're perceived to not be good at any of them. You just do all of them. Even down to the fact that if you put somebody like, hey, my name is Jersey and I'm with XYZ window washing and power washing. Just because I put power washing second, it means that I don't know power washing as much as I know window cleaning, right? Just think about that when I, when I just threw that out there. So don't get too far away from your, your, your core, but don't shy away from expanding your core just a little bit. Another big thing that you see, especially like this time of year in spring, is hiring too many people at once. Now, if you need to hire, that's absolutely awesome. High five to you. You've done something amazingly right and you're on the right track. But if you hire too many new people, now they're all competing to be the most ignorant. You, they're all competing to tell the customer the wrong thing. You're losing grasp. Think about this, this is an exaggerated situation, but if you have five employees, two of them have been with you for a long time and three of them haven't, who has the majority? 
the three who have not been there for a while. They do not know 100% everything, but then what do they do? More than 50% of the people they ask also don't know. So then what happens? Misinformation, poor work, poor quality. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't understand your vision, and they don't understand what you're trying to do with your company. If they don't understand all of that, then they're not going to convey that. Remember, everybody you have that works for you or with you is an extension of you. I had an operations manager, officer, whatever, who more people knew than they knew me. And I was completely okay with that because he was a great face for our company. People really, really liked him. He was super personable. And I absolutely had no qualms with what he did. I trusted him absolutely. Maybe you have somebody that's that good. That's rad. You don't have to be the face of your company, but you need the company to have the same feel no matter who they are they're talking to. And the truth of the matter is, if you lose sight of that, if you lose too much of that, you don't really get to gain that back. That's the really hard part is if you can't get it back, You can't recoup it afterwards. I know a guy who uh, started this year with no employees. He had to do a complete dump. A complete dump. And as of a couple months ago, he was at 11 guys. So that means he has 11 new employees. Zero existing employees. Now... Awesome that you need to hire 11 guys. That's absolutely phenomenal. But the problem is, is that the culture that is being given is such a piece of what you want it to be because there's not surrounded by what it should be. Now, if you have 20 guys and you just hire one new guy, that means that one guy is going to fall in the line to how things are done really, really quickly because everybody is there Everybody is the same vision, the same thoughts, the same process, the same image, and the same feel, the same experience, right? But if you hire too many people too fast, that's where the problem comes in. Now, there's another thing where people say, hey, I want to hire uh, another crew. So I'm going to hire two people, I'm just another crew, right? Well, what happens is, is now 50% of the crew that they are on, even if they get split up, is experienced people who will be faster, know more, and do more. Now, all of your crews you have, you went from one crew now to two crews, both crews are unhappy because they were working with somebody who really knew what they were doing, and now each crew has got somebody who doesn't know anything. It's gonna take a long time for them to be like, okay, we got our vibe. We got that feel back, we're good, right? So you don't wanna get into that position. Now, if you're in a spot where you're like, dude, like. People quit, like, I don't know what's going on. I lost all these people. I got first off, you can look at your culture and why so many people quit. May have something to do with that. But on the second thing is sometimes you have to do that, I understand. But if you say, hey, this fall I need to hire on two new people, three new people, four new people. Spring, I need another four people. Don't hire four people. Hire one person. Two weeks, hire one person. Two weeks, hire one person. Two weeks, hire one. Because now you have a rotation of seniority. You have a rotation of seniority. You have a rotation of knowledge. And your experience can be carried over between the people. You may only have two weeks of knowing what your experience is, which isn't super beneficial. But it's better than having four new people who then can dictate what's said. Now, early on, this is, this is weird, but... Early on in my company, I had two guys working for me, and they were a crew. And I didn't do anything with that crew. They were just a crew, right? The problem was with these two guys, this is before I understood that I needed to keep control of the company, they decided to start doing things the way that they decided to do them because they were out in the field, they were together, they could always talk to each other. And all of a sudden, I realized it was not the image of the company that I wanted to create. It wasn't the image I was happy with. It wasn't bad things. It was just the way they did things. It was like the non-offerings, the no-up services, the, the like uh, on job sites, they would just change the way, the process, the feel. So I had to bring it all back in. I had to take it all back and say, guys, okay, this is how we're going to do things and I need it to be done 100% exactly how I say. Because the next person 
who comes in needs to do it 100% the same way as everything else. If you lose sight of that or if you lose your grip on that, you're going to be SOL. You're going to lose sight or grip or you're just going to lose that feel or experience of your company. And you don't want to do that. So don't hire too many people too fast. It's not going to end really well. Now, I got another one here that your angry emails or angry texts, I get it. Comments. If you're on YouTube, comment. Tell me how stupid I am. (laughs) But this is not giving too many discounts. It could be even not giving discounts at all. Now, you guys know that I love plastic gift cards. I love giving a gift card instead of a business card. 100% of the time. It's great. I have little plastic gift cards. By the way, you can find it at cost printing for 25 bucks or whatever the dollar amount is for you. And they look just like gift cards for $25. And I always, people like, oh, you got a card? Oh, you need a card? Here, I just have these. I don't have a card, but I have some gift cards for you to kind of try us out. People love that. They keep it because they think it's money. They love it, right? But discounts don't translate like what you think. And I'll give you an example. If somebody does services and they do, you know, three services, and you say, hey, if you do a fourth service, I'll take this money off. Well, most of the time, that is not going to get them to do a fourth service. It's not the money, it's the happiness that the service brings. Now, there are times where you're going to get unhappy people. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, about this. But it does not translate one-to-one. You, don't, you can't give discounts thinking that allows people because we're a luxury, Right? If you want to have your Ferrari detailed, you're going to get it done by the guy who's going to do the best job. Right? There are no Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren, all that stuff. There are no Columbus Day sales. There's no President Day. You know what there is President's Day sales? On a mattress. That's the thing you need. You're not going to sleep on the floor. You need a mattress. When you have a need, right, or you have something that is just like, I got to get it. Uh, well, maybe you'll get the crappiest one. Now, I don't want to sleep on the crappiest mattress, right? If there's a mattress for 199 bucks, I don't want to sleep on it. But there are people out there who are like, I need a new mattress. This is all I can afford. Let's do it. Cheap, big sale, good, new mattress. But in a luxury service, that's not who you're getting. You're not getting the person who's like, oh gosh, I got to have my house's window. Because nobody needs to have it done. What they want is they want the value of what you bring. So a discount, not that it diminishes. And there's arguments if you're on pro window cleaning or any of these other places. There are always going to be these like um, arguments, if you will. With people who are like, I give discounts. I don't ever give discounts. I give discounts. Well, I don't ever give discounts because it makes me cheap. It makes me devalue my, that's not it. I get it and I see it and it makes a lot of sense when you do it, but I don't think the translation is there. So if you're giving discounts or you're trying to be the cheapest guy, oh man, I I need more work. I I think I should should, uh, do a $59 20 window special type thing. I gotta gotta put an ad out because fish is out there and they're, they're doing it for, Stop right there and think about what you're doing. Think about that discount. Now, this is like the number one thing that people talk about is discounts. So I talk to people about discounts all the time. There's good ones, there's bad ones, it does not matter. But the idea that you only focus on discounts is not awesome. And that's where I really want people to kind of know. It's like, don't focus on the discount. If that makes sense, right? Another... In- Final one, if you were, the biggest one, I think, is not answering your phone. The biggest part of why people could be not making as much as they usually make is because they did not answer their phone. Someone called, they just didn't answer the phone. If I'm a new customer and I call you, you don't answer your phone, I'm calling the next guy. That's the unfortunate truth. I'm calling the next guy. Right? 
If somebody calls you, answer your phone. And I guarantee that if you answer every call, you will see a spike in your growth. Spike in your numbers, a spike in your new business. Because all those people are now going to you instead of somebody else. They're going to you, right? It's pretty rad, but the simplest answers are sometimes the biggest. And the answering your phone one, if you do start answering your phone, you will get people who are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you answered. I called three places. that They didn't leave messages at three places. And even if they did leave a message somewhere and then they called you and you were the one that answered, guess who gets the job? You. A big piece of that is why I do those estimates over the phone. Not to get off track, but when we talk about estimates over the phone, that's why. is because when they talk to me, I give them a price, I give them the schedule, I get them in the books, and guess what? Everybody else that they either left messages with or that they were going to call are off the books. They're done. That was my chore. I had to get the Windows uh, schedule, get clean, done. The close rate is phenomenal. It's the same thing with answering your phone. Every time, now I know there's lots of spam calls. I know that and we all get the spam calls. I totally understand that. But not answering your phone when it could be a customer is a huge way to just kill your growth. So answer your phone. It's very, very simple, I promise you. But those ways could really, really help you. I got not rescheduling, no add-on services, hiring too many new people all at once, giving too many discounts or giving discounts and not answering your phone. Sometimes in business, it's the simplest things that really do translate to something bigger. And not that you out there are not doing amazing what you're doing because you are. You know you are. And not that I am some person who knows anything more than anybody because I'm not. But I can tell you that if you make little changes, they turn into big, big yields. You got to be a percent better every day, half a percent better every day, 25, a quarter, 25th of a percent better than you were yesterday. Those numbers add up. Business is like compounding interest. If you do something today, it compounds to tomorrow. You're doing dentist clothes, you get a new customer today because of whatever you did. That means that for the next 10 years, you have 20 jobs from them. Like This is how business works. Business is this giant rolling kind of ball of, of snow that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The farther it goes, the more things it picks up. What you do now for your business will translate forever. Forever. Sandlot. Boom. <laughs> anyway, uh, do it. You guys are doing great out there anyway. I hope you're killing it. I hope your season's going well. Uh, but again, if you didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It's a window cleaning resource. And I would love to put your supplies in. That's what I do. So let me put your supplies in. My number is 862 312 2026. That's a cell phone. Call me, text me. I would love nothing more than to put your orders in. Really, big or small, it really doesn't matter. I see a lot of you put orders in by yourself. Let me put your orders in, I beg of you. I do the shameless plug every week. It is just so I can get your orders. Boom, that's how I make money, right? Uh, let me do that, and another thing is, usually I point to the wall behind me, but as I said. But go to awcmag.com. If you haven't checked out the website, just go. It's American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yes, it's a real magazine. It's a paper magazine. You can read it on the toilet, promise. And it comes with magazine, uh, stickers in the magazine. It comes with posters. It comes with awesome articles, business. You're nerding out listening to a podcast about window cleaning business right now. Why not get a magazine? It's like 69, 69 bucks a year. 12 issues with stickers shipped to your door, plus you enter the elite cool kid. So go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. I would love it if you got a subscription. I see all the subscriptions come through, by the way. And they're the most awesome I find. So anyway, that's my rant for this week. We will be again next week. So if it's your first time here, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go out there and make sure not to kill the growth of your business. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.